Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome back to another Making Stuff video. If you've seen any of my old videos, you've probably seen that I like chainsaws and I like chainsaw hacks. I've actually turned an angle grinder into a chainsaw. I've made a chop saw out of a chainsaw. And I've actually turned a chainsaw into a blender. So when I saw this little miniature chainsaw at banggood.com, I told myself I've got to get my hands on one of these and do a review, and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So let's start out by showing you guys what comes with this chainsaw. Of course, you get the main part of the tool itself. Then you get this little miniature chainsaw chain. You also get a little miniature chainsaw bar. There's a battery. It says it's a 48 volt battery, but I kind of doubt it. We will check that out later. And also this is supposed to be a Makita compatible tool. So the Makita 18 volt batteries are supposed to work on this. We'll check that out later. You also get a charger. You get this thing here, which I have no clue what it's for. It also comes with some tools that you'll need to put this together an oil bottle it does not come with the oil i've already filled this oil bottle up with my own oil and then last but not least you get the instruction manual all right assembling this is very easy it's just like a regular chainsaw you just put your chain on the bar then you put your bar on to the tool making sure that the tensioner is in this little hole right here on the bar make sure the chain goes around the sprocket and you don't want it too tight or too loose, just like a regular chainsaw. You set the tensioning right here with that screw. And then once it is all set, you just tighten down the cover and that holds everything into place. So this is assembled and it should be ready to go. Okay, so now let's take a closer look at this battery. This is supposed to be a Makita compatible battery. So the tool is supposed to work with the 18 volt Makita cordless tool batteries. Now, this one says it's 48 volts. So I kind of have my doubts that this little thing is actually 48 volts. So I think this might be some kind of, shall we say, embellishment. But uh, we will, we'll take this apart and we'll take a look and see what's inside here. And also, the charger that comes with this, this has just got a barrel jack on the end of it and you plug it in right here. And this is how you charge this battery. I do know that it has an LED indicator here that when it's charging, it's red. And then when it's done charging, it turns green. And that's good because that means that this charge system does turn itself off when this battery reaches full capacity because you really don't want to overcharge a lithium uh, battery. One other thing I've noticed about the battery that I want to point out is it does not have any type of a meter on it. So there's really no way of knowing how well this is charged. Most batteries will have some type of a little battery meter where you push the button and the LEDs will light up and show you how well the battery is charged. This does not have that. All right, so I've cracked this thing open and there are no surprises in here. It's got exactly what I figured it would have in here. It's got the battery management system here and then it has five 18650 batteries in here that are 3.7 volts. So if you multiply 3.7 times five, that comes to 18 and a half. So this is not a 48 volt battery. This is an 18 volt battery and we will verify that here in just a second. I would also like to point out that these cells are 1500 milliamps. They are not 2000 milliamps as it says on the battery case itself. So I believe there's a little bit of some marketing embellishment going on here. It is not 48 volts and it is not 2000 milliamp hours. Another claim they make about this chainsaw is that it will run on Makita 18 volt batteries. Now I'm a DeWalt guy, I don't have any Makita batteries, but a buddy of mine does have some Makita tools and he loaned me one of these batteries. So here is a Makita 5 amp hour 18 volt battery and it does slide onto the tool and it does power it. So this tool does work on the Makita 18 volt batteries. Okay, so I've got this all set up and ready to start cutting, but I wanna point out a few things I've already discovered. It does feel good in the hand. It's very ergonomic when I hold this 
it feels like I'm holding a cordless drill. It's very well balanced and it does feel good holding it in my hand. But I have also noticed that this trigger does not have any type of a safety on it. So there's nothing to prevent this from engaging. And all of the cordless power tools that I have that have some type of a blade on it that can cut you has some type of a lever or a button that you also have to simultaneously press when you pull the trigger to engage the tool. Of course, this does not have that. But I have noticed that it does have a break on the chain. So as soon as you pull the trigger and you let go, the blade immediately stops. So I will give it that. That is a plus on this because most chainsaws, when you let go of the trigger, it has to wind down. And before I start cutting with this, I better just check the manual and see what the manufacturer says this is capable of cutting. And here under the scope of application, it says it's good for cutting trees and orchards, pruning branches in municipal gardens, cutting bamboo, chopping firewood at home, and necessary for outdoor leisure and personal protective equipment. So let's start out by cutting some firewood. I've got plenty of firewood, all different sizes, and we'll just start out with this little piece here. And I am using this just to keep the wood off of my table because I really don't want to cut into my table here. So we will just start by cutting through this small piece of firewood. And it went through it no problem at all. So let's up the size, a little bit bigger piece of firewood here. No problem going through that. So let's go to an even larger piece of firewood. <laughs> See if it will cut through this. No problem at all. Now, an even bigger piece of firewood, and I want to point out that this blade is not as big as the piece of firewood. So I'm not going to be able to just slice through it in one slice. So I'm going to have to rotate this as we cut it, but let's see how well it works. All right, and then let's rotate it. All right, so far I'm very impressed with this. It's working exactly like a chainsaw, just on a smaller scale. So let's check out some of these shavings. And it looks just like what you would expect to see out of a chainsaw. On a chainsaw, the indication of a sharp chain are large chunks, not small dust. And these are definitely large chunks. So that means this chainsaw is working exactly like it is supposed to. All right, so next on the list is pruning bushes in municipal gardens. I have no clue what a municipal garden is, but uh, I do have this bush that has kind of overgrown right here, right where my gate should be. So let's see how well this little miniature chainsaw will clean this up. All right, so next on the list is pruning trees. If you've ever used a full-size chainsaw, you know it can be kind of difficult to cut small stuff like this uh, because it can get wrapped up in the chain or it's just impossible to get good pressure for that chain to bite into it and cut it. Uh, I don't think this is gonna have any problem, but we're gonna try it anyway. And yeah, it's just going right through all of this small stuff like it was nothing. So I would say that this has no problem pruning trees. 
it's like it's snowing out here. <laughs> These Bradford pears are in bloom, but yeah, I say uh, this gets the uh, okay for pruning trees. So I really wanted to come up with a good way to measure the runtime of this tool. I thought about just putting a fully charged battery on here, pulling the trigger, starting a stopwatch and just seeing how long it ran. But to me, that's not a really good real world test for this. So what I did is I fully charged the battery, then I went around the yard and cut up everything that's been on my honeydew list since last fall, and I'll just show you exactly how much it cut on one charge of the battery. All right, so here is everything that I have cut so far on one charge of the battery. Here are the Bradford pear branches that I just did earlier. It also includes all of the stuff from this gate right here, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. But wait, that's not all. I also cut all of this and all of this before the battery went dead. And if you ask me, that's not too bad for a one and a half to two amp hour battery. Of course, after cutting those three big piles of limbs, my battery went completely dead. So I put it on the charger and then put a timer on it to see how long it would take that charger that plugs into here to completely charge this battery. And it took right about three hours. So this has turned out to be one of the coolest tools I've had here in a while. It is going to get a lot of use around the making stuff farm here. Um, I, I really like how light it is. It's two and a half pounds, which is 1.1 kilograms. You can use it with one hand. You can hold it out and cut things. Try, try holding a full-size chainsaw out with one hand like this and see how long you can do it. This little thing right here, it actually did come in handy. And I noticed that when I was cutting above my head, when I was cutting limbs, did it actually some of those sawdust, those chips would hit this and not come back in my face. So I know I was harping on this earlier, but it actually does have a use when you're cutting above your head. But when you're cutting just normally, normal height and all, all of the chips come out this direction because the chain goes in, around and out, and it really has no use that I could find other than when I was cutting above my head. So I did think of some other things that this would be useful for. If you're a hunter and you need to trim the limbs like on your tree stand, this would be perfect for that. Uh, I'm probably gonna leave this on my tractor because I have 35 acres that I have to mow and there's always branches that are always hitting me in the face and this would be great because it's so small and light. I can just stop the tractor, cut that branch and then just keep on mowing underneath the trees. Uh, that's probably where this is going to wind up here at the making stuff farm but i am very impressed with this tool i really like it and all in all it i would highly recommend this tool to anybody that has any type of a use for a little miniature chainsaw this tool is actually quite fun to use it's a very leisurely tool give me all your tools and nobody gets hurt i got a step drill bit on here and i ain't afraid to use it back off man S sorry man i don't want no trouble i didn't know you had a chainsaw So what would you use a little miniature chainsaw like this for? Let me know down in the comments. I'd like to hear from you guys. And if you like the video, please give me that big thumbs up. If you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching. <sighs> Scope of application, cutting bamboo. This is Tennessee. There's no bamboo around here. Wait, my neighbor's cat is named Bamboo.